and welcome back to the episode of the Real Conversations podcast. And this episode, we're actually skipping the normal introduction that I do because it's typically a very serious podcast. And while this episode will have elements of seriousness, this is going to be an entertaining episode. And this is going to be a painful episode because we are doing the Buffalo Wild Wings Hot Wing Challenge while having a good old-fashioned discussion. So I'm joined today in the studio by my good friend who's back in town, woo woo, the king of LinkedIn, the man, <laughs> the myth, the legend, Quinn Robertson. Hey, oh, uh, all my, all my, what was it, 5 million, 10 million subscribers or something from last time? Something right. like that, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, so, I'm just excited to be back here, man. Dude, this is, so we'll, we'll talk about how this episode came to be, but I like having you in the studio because you are one of the sharpest guys I know financial wizard, literally a CPA, but you're working more in like, I guess the venture capital kind of industry. And so this guy understands numbers like no other. He talks to very wealthy, rich people and, uh, he makes things happen. And so this is going to be a fun episode and I'll let you kind of explain the premise of how this came to be. In fact, that was yesterday. Yeah, it was a, uh, you know, when we get together, uh, it, it turns, it turns into good ideas, and most of the time, those good <laughs> ideas don't turn into anything, and they never actually come to fruition, and it just so happens that this one is a good one. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a really good one, but yeah, we were we were talking yesterday about a LinkedIn post that I had recently that was, I think I somehow incorporated, was it pie and some pizza and pie, I think, into a, into a financial... Uh, metaphor or something. And then we thought about, okay, like finance, food, food and finance. It sounds kind of interesting. And I love, you know, a, a certain YouTube series uh, that eats progressively spicy wings while interviewing people. I don't know if there's trademarks on that. So we'll no, throw, you can mention it. Okay. We'll call it hot ones. Cause mostly everybody knows what it <laughs> is. Um, but we were just like, what if we just did that during like an, like an interview and, you know, talk about finance stuff and do that. And so that was, the wild idea yesterday, and here we are today. I thought about it whenever you said it. I was like, that's interesting. But what I really like is you made this point yesterday of whenever you are eating really hot stuff and, I guess, doing difficult things in general, I guess this could be considered difficult. Ag agreed. You become way more honest, right? Like, it cuts out, like, a layer of that BS. And, like, because of how much you're freaking out from the hot wings, you're typically just speaking straight truth. And so we thought this would be really fun to, like, talk about numbers and finance and money and just do an episode where we are literally, like, dying from eating these hot wings. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a fun one. I have no idea what's, what's going to come out. Uh, and, you know, I mean that, you know, somewhat figuratively in the next hour and then maybe literally in the next five hours because uh, <laughs> I got I got to drive to Wichita here, or drive back from Wichita to Northwest Arkansas here in about uh, a couple of hours. So that's going to be fun, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. what we have in the docket here is we got ourselves 20 wings, four different flavors. So five a piece and starting with uh, the mildest up to the hottest, we have mild and then it goes, is it wild next? Uh, mild, hot, okay. wild, blazing. And let me, let me be clear whenever you made these selections, because I, <laughs> I found this very interesting. Normally, you do sort of progressively hot, incrementally hot, and you sort of work your way up a scale. And if you'll, if, if, if for these viewers at home, if you want to pull up your, uh, your Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, list of sauces, mild is the fourth most mild one. So it's at the very bottom of the scale. Yeah. And then we immediately jump to, we skip medium and everything in the middle. And our second one is the fourth hottest one <laughs> at hot. And so I, I, I don't know why this ended up occurring. I mean, we're, we are as, as uh, our good friend, uh, Ian, uh, Ian Worrell, who works at Nextus uh, put, he, uh, he basically said, you know, you, you've skipped the, the incremental and you've gone straight to mental. Right. And so I'm like, that's, that's a good one. I'm coining that. And that's going on the podcast. I wish you could have seen the phone call that I used to place these. Cause I didn't want to do that order online. I literally call and I go, Hey, I don't know what your flavor scale is, but like, what are the hottest wings you have? And so she like, I had her walk me through the list like three different times and I go, okay, uh, what would be like a less hot wing that you have? And she's like, oh, our mild. I was like, all right, let's do the mild and let's go back up to the top here. What are the th three hottest you have at the top if we get four flavors? And so I just had her give me the top three. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a good decision. It's yeah. going to be great, man. I'm excited about it. I'm excited. So I'm going to have you pull your mic a little bit closer. Cool. Yep. There he is. Okay. So I think... The other problem is, too, the, if you're watching the video, which I encourage you to do, they put the uh, 
wings in their container in like a in a quad box, and so there it's four different corners that yeah. they're in. So we don't actually know which one is which. Yeah, which we, is we're kind probably, of scary. We're probably gonna have to smell them and just guesstimate is yeah. it hotter or less hot than the other one. Yep. Okay, so a couple quick housekeeping things before, and then we'll get into the fun. Uh, if you guys enjoy this episode, hopefully you find this one entertaining. If you find it entertaining, please share the link with a friend. It helps us grow. And then on Apple, if you could leave a review by rating and reviewing the episode, that'd be incredible. Uh, but the numbers are continuing to rise. I appreciate you guys. Continue to share that link. And the other thing I want to mention, too, is we've been on such a good string of, I think, serious, high production, great podcast value that I wanted to take a moment and just have like a really fun episode with a good friend of mine who moved away and is back in town right now. But next week, I'm not going to say who because these things fall through sometimes, but next week I have an episode I'm incredibly excited about. It's going to be a more serious conversation, actually probably a very serious conversation with just an incredible human being who's pretty well known. And, uh, This week, I wanted to have fun in preparation for next week being more serious. The fact that you use fun for this is is a little bit terrifying on that on that side. But I, uh, you did tell me who it was next week, and that's uh, that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a really fun one. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, let's do it, man. Forks up. All right. So So the question now comes. I think we know this one is. I think so. I think that's the blazing one. Yeah. So the question is, I mean, this is the lightest one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does light equal like less spicy. You're going to use that as like a placemat. And so I would say. If you were to guess, would you go one, two, three, four? I think I would say hottest, second hottest. Sometimes the light throws me off. It's well, great. You know, let's just go for it. Let's Let, go. You know what? Uh, what The worst thing that happens is we eat the first one and it's the spiciest one. And it's just going to go downhill from here. That's yep. the worst thing that could happen. And since some people may just be listening instead of watching, uh, we're going to label this one the mild. We're trying the mild we're, one right we're now. We're going with mild. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mild? Hmm? Oh. You guys are going to hear a lot of chewing this episode. I'll try to back away where appropriate, just so you guys can not have the ASMR component to all of this. I think that's mild. I think we chose appropriately. That works out pretty well. Okay, cool. That's good. All right, so we're not dead yet. Mm -mm. No, no, no. So, Quinn. Sir. Where I want to start here is Shark Tank. Very popular, popular TV series that a lot of people enjoy. Mm -hmm. Is it getting progressively hotter? I think mine's getting progressively hotter. I think it's just you. Okay. Anyways. uh, Do we have milk and and water rules, by the way? How does this work out? uh, I think that we shouldn't use the milk on the mild ones. I think that's fair. If we... I think once we get to the third one, milk and water are open, are open game. Okay, that's okay, fair. That's fair. All right, keep going. Sorry. So Shark Tank, very popular TV show. I enjoy watching it. I've had many of my guests that have actually been on Shark Tank, which is really cool to say. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me about how does that actually work? Because that's a field that you kind of work in. And a lot of people see the deals that, you know, say yes to the deal and they do the deal on TV. Most people don't know. I think it's like 85 or 90% of Shark Tank deals don't actually get done. I didn't know if that was... I didn't know that it was that high of a number, but it, it's, it is not surprising that there is a percentage of them um, that, that don't end up making it across the finish line. So even before the show, and I actually learned this in the last couple of months, it's similar to like American Idol where they will go around. I don't think they bring a bus around or anything, but like they'll go out and have um, open contests where they'll have a group that'll basically go around <laughs> you pitch them as though you were going to pitch the investors. And then I think you sort of funnel your way into Mm. actually getting on the show. And then once you get on the show, that's where sort of the TV magic is and they splice a bunch of stuff together. Um, I've had a couple of people that I've gotten to talk to that were on Shark Tank and they said, you know, it's, it is created for entertainment value. There are certain instances where, you know, maybe a comment was said and they, uh, they try to overinflate it, whether it was positive or negative or whatever. And so, there's certainly an entertainment value there. But the thing that a lot of people don't know is it's not like you shake your hand on, you know, on the stage and you, they are investors in your company. They still have to go through an appropriate uh, due diligence process. And we can talk about kind of what yep. all of that means um, afterward. And that way they actually have to go and make sure that all of the stuff that you said is actually real and right. all of that. And so sometimes there's even later de- negotiation after you get off the show. And so the, the the investment terms may change or something like that. And so there are there are certainly instances where all of those end up 
not getting to the finish line, which is kind of unfortunate. But, um, you know, I think it's as a as those people trying to make sure and be good stewards of their capital or other people's capital, it's a it's a good thing to do on that front. So I looked it up. Only 27% of deals that close on the show actually get the investment. Wow. So wow. So 73% of those people that you see get a yes, it doesn't end up working out. Wow. Uh, that is that is much higher than I thought it would be. I much knew it was higher. something pretty high. Wow. It's, and it makes sense. We can talk about why it makes sense that such a small percentage actually work. Mm. But one of the things that you, is apparent in the TV show, I feel like, is you see someone pitch and the investors start asking questions and poking around. And it's like, what is the actual substance of the metrics that they're giving, the numbers they're giving, and all of that type of stuff? And you can quickly see some of the, the entrepreneurs that are like, I don't actually know what our numbers mean. What is this? Yeah, it's um, if there's one thing that you know, I I've talked to I talk to entrepreneurs as frequently as I can over the last four or five years. And well, let, let's actually qualify that. You talk yeah. if you're doing what do you think twenty calls a week. Um, it's it, when I was in, in my previous role, I think I probably got to, I was probably doing one, at least one a day for sure. Um, and I was reviewing more materials like emails and stuff like that, but I was, I was at least talking to people once or twice a day. Yeah. Okay. So let's call it like a thousand over the last three or four years. Sure. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. This man is very qualified to make these comments. I'd, uh, I'd like to say that, um, there's, a lot of this is uh, a lot of this is just trial by fire. Uh, I remember talking to entrepreneurs the very first time in my my the first conversations that I had, I had no idea what to ask. How do I appropriately evaluate these companies? And you you just you learn by trial by fire. That's for sure. That's for sure. You ready for the next wing? I think I'm ready. I've, and did we make a decision on which which one it is? I don't, this one looks lighter, but I don't trust it, man. That looks pretty hot. I don't know if I trust it either. I, let's just say, I hope that they would do some type of like circular motion. So yep. I feel like if we go with this one, it's yep. at least a safe bet. But the the thing is, this is not our incremental like no. scale here. We are jumping all the way to the top of the ladder now. We are, we are. And so I mean, the, the positive thing with it though, is all of these are at the top of the scale. So it's you would think that it's not that terribly different from a spiciness perspective, right? Right. Well, and let's uh, let's be real honest with ourselves here. I like mild things. I think mm. I struggle with hot things, meaning I like like a medium buffalo, buffalo wild wings mm. wing. But when we start getting like you and I did an element of this with John and Rob yep. about a year ago or so, that was the bomb sauce. Have you guys ever heard of the bomb sauce? Yeah. We, I feel like I almost died. Yeah. That was terrible. From Kansas, too. Shout out Kansas, by the way. Love Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I am i don't think any of these are anywhere near that, thankfully. Hopefully. Thankfully. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we think this is the hot one, so we're trying that now. Face the camera. It's spicy, but it's not what I would have expected. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. It's working on me. <laughs> really? I might get there, I guess. Oh, my gosh. I'm sweating profusely. And I wore, like, a light-colored shirt, so you guys are watching the video. You'll know this ain't fake. I'll, I'm probably going to sweat through this shirt pretty soon here. Yeah, this was probably a, a poor choice <clears throat> as, a, as a red cotton shirt on me. So <coughs> it's getting to me a little bit. There's a little bit of heat behind that sucker. Dude, the amount of sweat that I have, I can feel my face just glistening. Uh-huh. Mine is as well. I'm, my, my eyes are watering a little bit. So we're going to make it to the third wing before uh, before any liquid, right? Something like that, yeah. I think we got to maintain it. I think we do. I think we do. <sighs> All right. Let me, All take, right. Let me take the rest of this down. So here's the thing. You can't just take a bite of one of the wings. You got to eat the whole thing. Mm. And I've been going one bite. You've been, you've been, I think, appropriately probably doing like a bite at a time on that. Dude, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> yeah. This one's going to be... This is going to turn out to be a great a great end to the show, I think. I'm excited for where this takes us. We were on Shark Tank. We were talking about maybe why some of these investments don't don't get to the finish line. Um, and on the off chance someone doesn't know what Shark Tank is, why don't you go and tell them? Yeah, so Shark Tank, if you've not seen it, is basically for – Sharks, and you can almost equate them to angel investors. Um, and what, but basically, what that means is fairly well to do individuals that are wanting to invest in companies that are at the earliest stages of their growth. They've maybe gotten a little bit of revenue, um, 
when they're wanting to grow and scale their business and they need some uh, money to help grow or to help fuel that growth. And so they're basically giving away a percentage of their company for some amount of money to these angel investors on the, on the TV show. And they're, they call them sharks because they try to basically outbid each other to yeah. get, to get access to the deals. And so it's kind of the, the shark tank of them going after each other. And uh, revenue, that just means like the sales that your business has. Yep. yep. That'd be revenue. And, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> You're really struggling for this one. Dude, I, to, I that's why I set the expectation before we started that this would be a struggle for me. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm better with spicy food than you. I'm not great with spicy food, though I like spicy food more, and I think I do more of it than you. Uh, this is good because the tagline of the episode is do hard things and live a meaningful life. And yep. I try and do hard things every day. And uh, <clears throat> Is this one of them? <laughs> th- this is a new, a new bucket for me of doing hard things. I think so. I think so. All right. You ready for the next one? I think I'm ready for the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's get our milk ready. Okay, that's probably, you know, that might be the the, the right thing to do there. Oh, my God. All right. I will. I love it, man. Yep. This is a, this is a fun, this is a fun world to be in. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. No, it's not. No, it's not. The next ones are going to be easy. Right? Easy money. In proportion to the jump we just made between that first mild one and the hot one, yep. this jump would be significantly less. I think so. Keep, I think so. Cap that. I would certainly hope so, at least. Uh, I haven't looked at the Scoville units for this. Uh, Is that an actual metric? Scoville, yeah. So there's, <laughs> there's an actual Scoville scale. Um, so now I'm, I'm going to mildly nerd out here. There's a chemical in many peppers called capsaicin, and really what that means is it is a, it is a thing that makes your tongue, your mouth feel like it's very – it's it's spicy. It's basically going after, going after and trying. The seed is trying to protect itself. The pepper's trying to protect itself, basically, and so it releases these chemicals. And capsaicin, it, the amount of capsaicin in something is measured by something called Scoville units. And the more Scoville units, the more capsaicin, and then that's sort of how they measure spiciness in most peppers. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't know you knew that. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're the right guy for this episode. It seems like I, uh, <laughs> I love, I love me some spicy peppers. Um, we, we had a, um, this was probably two years ago. We bought on Amazon the world's hottest um, ramen noodles, oh. and it was, uh, I, I was on the floor crying when, and after eating just a couple of bites of those, uh, and I forget what the what the number of Scoville on that was, but it was it was ridiculously spicy. One so, of the, probably the spiciest thing I've ever had. This is a walk in the park for you. Uh, so far, so far, yes. But the next couple will be will be more interesting. I think. Let's get it over with. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Is that less hot? It feels like it's less hot. Although we say that. Give it, you know, a 30 seconds to actually kick in, and we may just be crying a little bit more. You may see the single solitary tear that comes down our face. That may be an accurate statement. Mm. It's not really building that much for me. I'm over here just like, oh, man. That one was actually tasty. I would say that one that we just had is actually probably my consistent, comfortable uh, level of spiciness. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I say we go uh, all four before getting any of the milk or water. Okay, I think that's fair. Uh, I think that's fair. All right, back to uh, back to the topic at hand here. Yeah, yeah. Shark Tank, right? Hmm? What kind of company would get on Shark Tank? Like, what are the the numbers, the metrics that you think you would see? Yeah, it's um, what's very interesting, and there's a difference <clears throat> between so it, for folks that are sort of in quote, startup land, startup world, and that whole thing. And let's define a startup too. Yeah. So a startup is, think of it as anything from, I just formed a company. Um, you know, I filed an op, I filed uh, the, the statements and the registration with the state or with the government or whatever. And I'm a officially licensed legal company. All the way to probably you have a few million in sales or something like that. Most, there's not a really hard to find thing there, but that's what most people I think would call a startup Mm -hmm. in that space. Um, Really startup is intended to mean it's not a single state of being. It's a, it's a transition. You are growing out of a startup phase to be a 
profitable, you know, uh, profitable business that has more money coming in the door than walking out the door. Yeah. yeah. It, I would say, I would add to that, like you are, it's kind of, startup is almost like a mentality. Like I'm going to be scrappy. I'm trying to grow. I need to do what it takes to make this company work. Yep. Things are not super predictable. You're not just like making a ton of money and you're not like Microsoft or Google right now. Yep. Like they are very stable. They're publicly traded companies. You are way earlier in that. Yeah. 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 The the hope is that you turn into one of those at some point yep. for sure. Um, and so when people think about startups, a lot of times they associate them with software or technology companies. You know, you see um, uh, the different shows out there um, that are related to software companies. You've got the, the, What's the Facebook movie? Um, social social, social network. network. Social network. You've got Silicon Valley as the TV series. Um, so everyone starts to sort of associate technology with the word startup. And a lot of times, the companies that are on Shark Tank are not frequently technology companies. They're yeah. frequently product companies. They're selling you know, uh, goods or services or something like that. Um, and maybe they're doing internet sales, they're, do, they're selling stuff on Amazon or something like that, um, but they're selling a, a physical product. And so that's, um, those are typically the types of companies, you know, they're in the early stages of their sales and they've got this product and they want to continue to expand out, you know, the, the sharks that are on have connections into Walmart and other retailers that they're probably trying to get access to or distribution channels. Yep. Um, and so for them, one of the reasons why they want them to invest in their company is they're not going to actually, they're not just going to give them money. They're going to help them grow and help kind of create that success for them as well. It's like the brand value they have too. That's exactly it. That's like exactly he, it. Mark Cuban's one of the sharks and he owns the Dallas Mavericks and he's got like a large social media following and just like saying that he is one of your investors or using him in your commercials or advertisements. I mean, that's like Michael Jordan being an advertiser for Gatorade. Like they picked him because he's a public figure and that actually helped Gatorade sales. So it's kind of the same thing. Not only are you getting Mark Cuban's, um, not only are you getting his investment, but you're also getting his brand value that he brings to the table. Yeah. And these, and these people have, they've gone through uh, what these <laughs> co early stage companies are doing and struggling with right now. They've done it dozens or they've done it plenty of times so they can sort of see around the corner as well on what are the issues that you're going to run into let me help you get in front of that as well yeah and so moving to why do most of the deals not work out i in my opinion it's because you have someone who's presenting their startup and usually the it's like an hour pitch you're doing. Mm. It could be two or three I've heard yeah. and they just cut it down like a 15 minute segment yeah. but in that time that you're pitching what someone can say to you and what is actually true in reality are two separate things. And you have the greasy salesman that we all know of the used car salesman, and they'll just say anything to try and get that deal, to try and get the money from the shark. Yep. And so you may get a yes on the pitch on TV that airs. And that doesn't mean that money's going in the bank. So what's going to happen afterwards is the shark, Mark Cuban mm -hmm. and a couple of his team, financially smart people like Quinn are going to go and they're going to look at documentation that the startup has yep. on what is their revenue? Who are their customers? Can we verify all of the things they actually told us? And most of the time, it seems like that stuff doesn't actually add up between what was said in the pitch and what is reality. And that's why the investments likely aren't happening. Yeah, that's, that's probably, I would imagine that's probably a big component. The other one is, you know, Every time an investor is seeing an, a prospective investment opportunity, they're going to make some certain assumptions. They're going to see that, okay, here's the information that was presented to me. They dig in a little bit further. They look at financials and other things. And maybe maybe the entrepreneur, you know, there was no level of real, you know, egregiousness on what they were saying, but maybe they misspoke or maybe it was slightly more, slightly less mm -hmm. than, than what they had originally projected. And so then, therefore... The investor's like, well, I said I was going to give you an investment at these terms or for this thing, this amount of the company. And now because of these small changes, here's my new offer. And right. then sometimes there's a little bit of negotiation and back and forth. And so maybe just through the natural process, that's likely how you start to get maybe further and further apart on reality and what people want. And then at some point, people just walk away from the table as well. That's a good point to make. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready to hand to head to the blazing hot?
I think I'm ready for this one. I think I'm ready. You want to know what's going to be the funniest thing, though? If this one ends up being probably the the least spicy one, and we've already gone through the gauntlet, I would like to think that that's that's going to happen. I'm not, I don't think that's going to, but, you know, I would like to at least. All right, the Buffalo Wild Wings Hot Wing Challenge. This is the hottest wing they have, the Blazing Hot Wing. Cheers. Cheers. Nope, it's just spicy as one. There's a, there's a little kick in that one. Bro. I think there's some Carolina Reaper in that one. I can taste... I can. I, there's something... There's a very distinct flavor to that, and I think that's what it is. All right, we got to wait <clears throat> like 60 seconds before we drink anything. All right, <clears throat> cool. I think my tongue's swelling. I think it's possible. My tongue's de- my tongue's definitely on fire. This, one, <laughs> this one's definitely painful. Definitely painful. So oh. Jacob, I'm curious. The I, what I want you to do right now is, I want you to talk through <laughs> an income statement right now. I want you to talk about what things you would find on a company's <laughs> income statement or financials or profit and loss statement. Yeah. So or do you want to go straight? Oh man, I'm hurting right now, dude. <laughs> Well, so no. you're going to see money coming in the door yeah. like their sales. We refer to that as revenue. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's also known as as income. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh. <laughs> so it's also known as income. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so that money goes into the company, <laughs> and that's their sales, but they have expenses, and they have to use the sales to cover those expenses. Yep, that's accurate. And if those sales don't cover the expenses, <clears throat> then that is <clears> – <throat> That's referred to as a loss. Yep, that's accurate. Quinn, you go. Yep. Uh, yeah. Give me a second. No, I gotta get some milk. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> we thought this was gonna be fun, man. We were all, we were so good up until this one. Oh, you gotta talk through it, man. Yeah. So what you'll typically see? No, no more milk, man. I did the hard part. You gotta keep going. Mm-mm. <laughs> my, my ears are hurting right now. That's not good. Um, I'm like vibrating. Yeah. So. Uh, on an income statement, walking top to bottom, again, you'll, t- you'll see revenue at the very top, and then you'll see typically the cost of your product, right? If you're selling something, you have to pay something for it originally, you do something with it, and then you sell it for a little bit more. So that amount that you originally paid for is your cost of goods sold. You subtract that from your revenue, that's when it's going to be called your gross contribution margin. And in that, that's what that's likely going to be called. And then from there, you have other expenses, marketing expenses, you have you know, a lease for a warehouse, you have other things like that that are going to be expenses as you go on a, um, throughout your month or throughout your year. And then basically you get, you subtract all of those, you see the net income at the very bottom. So net income or net loss is all of the money you brought in, less all of the money you had to spend to get that revenue. And if it's positive, it's a net income. And if it's negative, you call it a net loss. I hope you guys are watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a fun one. I never claimed to be good at handling hot things. What's funny, I, I talk to my girlfriend very frequently and about my level of being able to handle spicy. And the way that she has described it to me, and I think I've, I used to say I was really good at spicy things. And now what I, what I tell people is I'm not good with spicy things. I just like them more. And so I do them more frequently. So I get used to it more. I'm used to the level of pain. It's still the same level of pain that everybody else feels. I'm just a little bit, I'm a little bit better at it because I've done more stupid things like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My tongue hurts so bad. Ah, this, uh, this good old this yeah, was milk. vitamin D. <laughs> hold me, hold me. Vitamin D milk. There we go. Yeah, so, man, I'm at risk of becoming a meme here because I know I'm probably going to cut this up and post it, but quality content, guys. We're doing it for you. That's exactly it. Anything for the reviews. Oh, my gosh, dude. That hurts so – it's like whenever you're about to throw up. You know how, like, your skin goes pale? You start cold sweating. Oh, yeah. A little bit tingly. Oh, yeah. That's how I feel right now. Yeah. You don't have to drive four hours here in an hour. As well. So it's going to be a glorious, a glorious drive for me. Dude. All right. So I think the only thing that's appropriate is 
I've also gone glassless, by the way. If anybody's <sighs> if anybody's noticed, the 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 glasses have, have come off, and that that means there's a level of seriousness going on with me right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys probably saw it too. I uh, took off my hat. I buzzed my head. I got a buzz cut. Mm. I have not had a buzz cut since I was ten years old. Yeah, that's probably about the same time for me. We did the the standard like summer buzz cut pretty frequently. So yeah. It's been a while, though. Yeah. I, uh, Rob's eight-year-old son, Lincoln, I let him take a chop at it. So, you know, it's just hair. It's going to grow back. But yep. I've been running a lot, doing whatever. So I figured it'd be kind of nice to get the breeze back on the scalp. Yeah, more uh, more aerodynamic. You're at a level of fitness now that that means something on a level of aerodynamicness. I feel like that's a word. So speaking, or I guess real quick, let me say, I think the only thing that makes logical sense is – before the end of the episode, we both have to eat another one of of the Blazing Hot. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, we I'll, also have to both recognize right now that we ate our first one, and we have gone through roughly two-thirds to three-quarters of the milk that we had. <laughs> so we have to be cognizant of the fact that if we do one more, th- there is only water left, right. and, and that does not that doesn't bode well. I, I vote to, uh, to allow ranch, though. What is hmm. your stance on that? I think that's fair. I think that's a fair substitute there. Okay. It's a very fair substitute. Hey, so on the, uh, let's get back into the finance, but on the topic real quick before that is the boys and I have been talking, right? Yep. We think we're, we might do a marathon at the end of November. What do you think? I'd be in for that. Yeah. I'd definitely be in for that. Um, I've been, what's the, what's the phrase? Voluntold, I think, uh, was the, the word that I might've used for the last one that I needed to do a marathon. Um, suckered into it i don't know if the what the right appropriate phrasing for that is but when was that earlier this year maybe we we did that in april april 2nd yeah um so i think i remember you guys saying that two weeks before something hey quinn are you going to come cheer us on uh, in the marathon and i said yeah like absolutely i'll be there i'll be on the sideline supporting you guys and then within 24 or 48 hours somehow you guys had suckered me into actually running it on absolutely no training so that you know, awesome. right now we've got a month and a half to two months. So, I mean, I should be, I should be, you know, a, a professional runner in the next two months with that level of training. You joke about that, but out of all of us that are about to run it, you literally qualified and ran the Boston Marathon. I did, but that was a, that was a much, much younger, uh, much more fit version of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was actually looking back at some of my, um, some of my, one, it was my qualifying race, but then also just a training race that I did. So I ran a half marathon that was actually, I would argue, my best race that I've ever run at any distance. Um, And I was looking back at those times for that half marathon, and it was about, I think it was about six months before my Boston race. And I look back at, like, the mile pace that I did. I will never be able, I can't even run one mile that fast now. What was it? Um, I think I ran... It was a half marathon at, uh, like, 624, 625 pace, I would say. Yeah. For thirteen point one miles, mm. yeah, it was not a, it was not, not something I could do. I, I don't actually don't even know if by the time I got back in shape, if I could get back to that level of of fitness. I, I don't know if I could. Yeah, I'm excited for the marathon, though. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, what, we, and I want to call this out too, so mm-hmm. that. Uh, because I know the boys listen, and I know the boys said, I know who all said they were going to run. Let's put the receipts out there on the internet. Uh-huh. This was John Peterson's idea. Oh, wow. The man who said, in here, screw that, I never want to run a marathon again. Mm-hmm. It hates running. Mm-hmm. This was John Peterson's idea. The one thing I love about this community and this sport is it's addictive. It really is something that you can get into, build a community, build a friendship around, and it's something that is... There's something ther- therapeutic about it. It's it, it absolutely is something that I've talked to plenty of people that are like, yeah, I ran a 5K, couched a 5K, I'll never do it again. And then yep. you see him out running a 10K at some point. It's It happens all the time, and I'm really glad that he's excited about it. Yep. So John's idea, proud of you, man. But let's put the receipts out there. Quinn Robertson is in. Jacob O'Connor is in. John Peterson is in. Keenan, don't know how to pronounce your last name, is in. And Grant Johnson is in. And Jerome is in, in as well. So the boys, I know you guys are listening. Grant's been on the podcast. Yep. You guys know John, obviously. They're, they all said they're in. 
So we got to hold them here, make sure they actually do it. That's yeah. absolutely it. And uh, and if they don't run, then uh, they get to come and sit and do the next version of this hot wing challenge. Dude. And that could be the punishment if they don't do that. Bro, we should do a marathon recap episode over the hot wings. Can we at least have some level of time between <laughs> the finish and that? Because if you imagine finishing a race and within <laughs> like 20 or 30 minutes, you hop, in the, you hop in the chair, your stomach is just full of goo and Gatorade and maybe like a like a candy bar or something like that and then you stick this on top of that's a bad decision you'd vomit man that wouldn't work it wouldn't work I I want to toss this out there too anyone that's listening that's like dude I want on a marathon it's been on my bucket list hit us up DM at real period conversations or if you know us just text us individually we're open to making the group larger like we're all for people doing hard things and living a meaningful life so this by all means counts towards that and if you guys want to run let us know 100% 100% it's a uh, the one, whenever you were, uh, uh, running your hundred mile race, probably the most enjoyable part was, I forget when it was one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And those guys ended up showing up and they started running with us. And so we went from me and, uh, Rob for a little bit and John and sort of like the, the three or four of us there. And, we basically turned into a group of seven or eight of us just consistently running down the road as this pack of people. Uh, and you were sort of in the absolute most dire pain, but it was just sort of the small little community doing something really, really hard at three o'clock in the morning at some point. So that was super cool. And you guys were all in such great moods too. Like everyone was having a great time. We all had our lights on. We were actually, I'll tell you what, the really cool moment, and you weren't here for the recap episode. You and I haven't actually sat down and talked yeah. about that's crazy because you were went back to Arkansas. We even talked about this. Yeah, but after dur- during the race, it was like three a.m. and uh, I was way out of it, dude. I literally fell asleep while I was walking. But you guys all decided to shut off your headlamps, mm-hmm. and it was a clear night sky in the middle of Kansas, just rural Kansas, no buildings or anything anywhere, no lights coming from the city, and we just walked and looked up at the stars. And the moon was a full moon, I think. Yep. It was just so beautiful listening to the crickets and looking at the stars. It was awesome. We did that. Uh, I think I had hopped back in for a little bit of that. So I was there for a little bit of it, but probably, but not a ton of it. And it was just a little bit that we were able to, because we were, we started counting shooting stars. Yep. Yeah. 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 And we were all like, no, that's BS. Shooting stars aren't real. And then one person would see it and then someone else would miss it. And then yeah. we, we all ended up seeing them though. At some point I, there has to be a part of me that says someone was just messing with everybody else. Maybe they hadn't seen one in maybe 10 minutes or so. And they just... They turned backwards and said, ah, found one. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah probably so. Uh, okay. I'm excited for for the marathon, but I'm sorry, dude. I'm out of it. I have sweated through my shirt. If you guys can see it in the in the video, Quinn can verify that I'm indeed can't confirm. protruding sweat right now. Can't confirm. Uh, we are just generally uncomfortable here, but. I'm super comfortable. I'm, you know, I. I you don't sweat, though. I don't. Um, so there's probably two reasons with that. One, I've got like very low body fat. If you can sort of see like I, I am the equivalent of string bean. Like that's just the world that I live in. Um, Jacob and John have been trying to get me to the gym and it's been some level of success over the last 12 to 18 months. It's um, more difficult now that you're in Arkansas. Yeah, it's much more difficult. Yeah. Um, but so because of that, I've got like a very low v- body fat percentage around me. So I get cold pretty easily. So it can be, uh, I have found myself being very comfortable in 95 degree weather. Um, 95, I will go out and actually wait until it's 100 degrees outside and go and run because I find it very comfortable. And I also don't drink any water. So one, not a great health benefit. Don't do that. Um, but for, that's probably the other reason why I don't sweat significantly as well. It's literally just to quantify this for you guys. We were doing the St. Louis Marathon April 2nd. It was hot out. I was in a sleeveless shirt. I would have been shirtless if I didn't have to have my bib on. And I had on shorts and a camel pack and I ended up getting sunburned and I was overheating and Quinn was running, wearing a stocking cap yep. with a jacket, yep. pants yep. and started with gloves on. I definitely did. What the heck? And, and yeah, I think by the very end, I might have like unzipped my pants a little bit the, down at the bottom with where to get a little bit of breeze from my ankles. But it, that was about it. That was Just about ridiculous. It. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get back to our, uh, our financial conversation here. Cause this is food and finance. This is food and finance. We got to get back to the finance part. Quinn, talk to me about, so we have, I want to show a bit of light on this. We have high net worth individuals, accredited investors, people that make hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars also referred to as, I guess, rich people, if you're gonna put it bluntly, why is it 
attractive to them to invest in individual companies. This is something that people outside of this industry, I feel like have very little knowledge on why it makes sense, why they do it. And the fact it's kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'll start off with all of this that, uh, 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 both Jacob and I are not your financial advisors, Good. you know, yeah. dot, dot, I, dot. I meant to do that. Right. Uh, you know, we are, this, take none of this as legal financial advice, do your own due diligence, you know, all the giant brick of terms of, you yep. know, terms of service conditions, et cetera, down at the bottom. Um, so I'll start off with all of that. But so there's this world where individuals that have made a certain level of wealth in their life um, have a desire to, um, there are places that you can invest that are not just in your stock, public stock portfolio, right? You've got maybe a Fidelity account, a Vanguard account, or something like that. And back to this, these startups, similar to Shark Tank, um, there there is a world out there, not just on Shark Tank, um, and not just in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and New York, where individuals, high net worth or, or wealthy individuals are rich invested. People. Yeah, rich people <laughs> are investing in early, early stage companies um, with the hope that they're going to grow and give them a significant return back. Um, and I always, I have found that why people invest in these companies, it's on a spectrum. So on one side is highly return driven, capitalistic type of scenario. The other side is very philanthropic, right? I have a, a young budding entrepreneur who's wanting to do some cool things, make the world a better place, and I just want to help support them. I don't care if I if my money just goes into a fiery burning pit, um, but if I can get a chance to help them <laughs> along the way, make their dreams a little bit better, employ some people, make their community better, all of that, it's worthwhile and, and good for them. And so I find that people fall somewhere on that spectrum. And some people tend more to one side, some people tend more to the other side, but it's a it's a combination of both, of getting to support entrepreneurs at the earliest stages that are doing ridiculously hard stuff. Yeah, it's, how do I wanna put this? You can invest in the stock market mm-hmm. and that's good. That That is a smart thing for people to do. Mm-hmm. It historically has good returns. But if we talk about like the return profile, ROI, return on investment, how much money are you going to make? It's usually expressed as a percentage. Mm-hmm. The stock market offers very consistent, what would you call it, 8%? Yeah, I think the standard S&P benchmark uh, is either 8 or 10%, pretty typically. 8 to 10%. Yep. If you want to have the chance of losing all your money, lighting on fire like you talked about, but the opposite of that, you want to have the upside of 300xing your investment, the, you, you're probably not going to get that out of a real estate investment. You're probably not going to get that out of the stock market. Mm. You are most likely to get that out of investing in a startup company. And I think it's important for people to understand that usually, or I guess in, at least in this one, comparatively, the level of risk that is associated with startups is the reason for that the returns are so high. Mm. Because you are, I would say your compensator, your return is measured by that risk. And so you have a higher upside because your downside is so much lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, um, I don't remember the actual numbers, but I think there's kind of the standard that it's either five uh, five of 10 or eight of 10 um, small businesses or new companies fail within the first year or two or something mm-hmm. like that. It's it's some you know, significantly high percentage of companies fail within the first couple of years. And it's like one out of 10 that actually has some sort of exit or a liquidity event or to even like, break that down even more, an event where they're IPOing or they're sold to another company where you then get your money back. Otherwise, it's tied up that whole time. So yep. it's only like 10% that, that gets that far. And and there's a lot of data out there that even suggests it's lower than one out of 10. It's one out of 100. It's one out of 500 um, that actually have a very, very positive outcome there. Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of, th- one of the most pro- prominent differences between these early stage companies that these quote, rich people are going to be investing in. Um, The difference between that and maybe, you know, investing in a mutual fund in your Vanguard account or Apple or Google or something like that is these, if you're investing in Apple, you can buy it today and you can sell it tomorrow. And maybe you make a little bit of money, maybe you lose a little bit of money, but there's a, you're able to sort of get in and get out of those investments very quickly. These early stage startup companies very typically you know, you're you're investing and that that money is locked up. It's in the company. It's getting reinvested to try to continue to grow. 
Um, and you're, there's a strong likelihood that with these very, very high growth companies that you're not going to see that money back for some would say, you know, three to five years, many would say five to seven. And some of the smartest people out there might say, you know, seven to 10, 10 to 12 on that front too. So it's a, there, this is definitely a, a long-term long game strategy there for sure. Yeah. It's like have your money tied up for 10 years or light it on fire. Those are pretty much the two almost guarantees if you're going to invest in a startup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the one thing that I will say that I, I try to differentiate, um, there's a world out there for anybody who is maybe looking at investing in startups or something like that, investing in hyper growth technology startups is a type of investment where you put a bunch of money in some of them are going to go you know know, go bankrupt not give you any money back some of them are going to do really well and give you kind of a nice return for everything else that that helps subsidize the rest of it um that is a a style of investing but there is also a world where you can invest in a local profitable business that's doing steady state growth and you know, you're getting maybe better returns than you would in the S&P 500 or something like that. You're getting cash dividends, money in the bank account uh, or in your mailbox on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis. Um, And so there are these high or uh, still risky investments, but not nearly as risky as some of these hyper growth companies, not as stable as GE, General Motors, something like that. Um, but there are ways that you can get money out a little bit quicker, start to see some of a return. So it's, um, I like to tell folks that it's um, startup investing, angel investing is not just this really, really grow or bust scenario. There's levels to the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get this over with. You want to get this over with? <sighs> no, but I mean, uh, we might as well, I guess. If, to clarify, if you're listening, not watching, I want to get the last hot wing over with. I don't want to get the episode over with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we, uh, uh, do we have, do we, we have two wings left? We have three. We have three. Uh, we're not eating the third one. We so, could probably give that, you know, someone that's hanging out outside the podcast room. We can tell them it's like a buffalo one, or not, tell them it's a barbecue one. Yeah, that, that'll be the absolute plan. Okay. We're not going to do that, by the way, for anybody that's listening. We, we, we will, we won't do that. We might do it. <laughs> oh, I made, cheers. I made a poor decision on size of wing here. Size matters with wings. This may come as no surprise. That's still hot. Dude, I had just calmed down. Uh huh. <laughs> you don't know what's sad? I'm opening up the ranch at a time where <laughs> it's you, not overly valuable for me. What are you gonna dip in it, man? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get a little bit of that on. Maybe. I'll Bro. leave it for when I need to. Oh, I'm in pain, man. I'm putting sixty seconds. No, here we go. We gotta ask questions. Questions that matter here. Yeah. Quinn, where where does this rank on the list of dumbest things you've done? Oh good lord. Um definitely there. Um in terms of spicy things, I've done some spicier, stupider things. Um, but so there are those things that are definitely there. Um, but I would say, what are some other stupid things that I've done? Help a friend out, try to run to hundred miles. That was dumb. Why am I involved in all of these? That's true. I don't know. There's a th- there's a theme that maybe happens. I'm not just all involved. They're usually my idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what else did I that I think about doing? Um, I can't tell you right now. I can't tell you. I'm. <laughs> I've got nothing that's coming to mind. Wait, hold off, Quinn. If you had to make uh, as much money as you possibly could, how are you doing it in ten seconds or less? Go. How am I making money? Um, go and find a skill that a small subset of people find incredibly valuable. Go service them, and do it. Do it really, really well. No, something practical. What are you? What are you buying? What are you doing? Uh, uh, Lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, All right, drink. <sighs> Lottery ticket. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not guaranteed. That's got a nice upside with it, though. I've got no milk. Uh, that was a dumb decision. Bro. <sighs> uh. 
Did you just get a phone call? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. She's probably going to try to figure out where we are. <sighs> Should I pick it up? <sighs> <sighs> hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. We just had a blazing wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, you finish it. Deep in the pain cave. Very, 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 very deep in the pain cave. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, I will also say, <laughs> stupid things that I've done um, have typically involved like endurance running without with almost no training. And they have frequently been around you, I've noticed. Because mm-hmm. when you were training for your 100-mile race, we went out for a 25, 30-mile run, and I had done almost no training for it, and yeah. somehow I ended up with it. That was the first marathon you'd run in like a couple of years, I think. Might have been close to a decade. Might mm. have been close to a decade, I think. I love that this is going to live on the internet forever. Mm. Yeah, that's not that's not a uh, that's not a good decision. So what I've thought about. So uh, we thought about this would be interesting from a podcast perspective. My original idea for this was, so for those of you who have seen Shark Tank, it's a, it's a three or four minute pitch and then they do Q&A and all that type of stuff. And my thought was, could we get a Shark Tank style situation where someone's pitching their investment opportunity, getting questions from investors, and both the investor, a prospective investor and the company the founder of the company, the guy who's pitching, have to continually eat increasingly hot wings while they go through that. That was my original idea. I'm recognizing I don't know if that's a great decision to be up on stage doing that. I like it. I would offer a derivative of that, and I'll let you know when I can feel my, feel my tongue. Okay, yeah. I literally feel like I can't feel my tongue. <laughs> it's so swollen. Uh The derivative of that that I would offer is, <clears throat> man, can you imagine doing this with somebody you've never met before? Oh, man. How much of an icebreaker this would be? It would be great. Uh, what is it? You're, you know, you're in, uh, you're, you're in the same situation. It's, uh, it's, it's trial by fire. It's, it's building a suffering. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's Trauma exactly bonding. It. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Okay, so my derivative of that would be you're in an ice bath. So you can either be in the ice bath or eating wings, but the investors have to be in one of those. Okay. Where, like, they're in a vulnerable situation, but they're being pitched, and they have to, like, ask their questions and do the Shark Tank thing. I think that would be fun. Do you think the um, the ice bath thing is overhyped? No. Love it. Okay. Let me, wait, let me, let me give some credit here, too. Uh, Grant Johnson actually had the idea for – we did this, actually. We went to his house, got really hot wings – Got in the ice bath and ate the hot wings. Seriously? Because he was like, it's hot and cold. It'd be kind of funny. But I think it'd be great to do that and add in your idea of the Shark Tank pitch. Those two together. Hot and cold. Yes and no. Something like that. Katy yeah. Perry? Katy Perry. There we go. Anyways, uh, do you think ice baths are overhyped? Mm. I don't know if they're significantly overhyped. I think there's a lot of popularity around them right now. Um, I think it's probably a fad that will probably diminish, but ha- but always have a set of individuals that will continue to do it long term. Um, I don't think it's just gonna you know go away like the pet rock did, but I think that it's probably gonna be getting out of its hype cycle here before too terribly long. I do think there's more substance to it though than a pet rock. Like there's actual scientific. Don't ben- you say benefits. that about pet rocks? <laughs> <laughs> there's real scientific benefits to the ice bath, and it is honestly, I sound like one of those. Uh, Born again Christians, the ice bath has made all of the difference in my life as <laughs> wow. of the last couple of years. It's wow. been incredible. Good for you. Good for you. I'm glad for that. I've done it probably five to ten times, uh, so not nearly as uh, as religiously as you have. Uh, and, and how were those whenever you did it, Quinn? Oh, uh, you guys were there for that. You guys were, were there for all of those. Yep. Um, I took, uh, I did the ice baths. There was a level of professionalism. A level of profanity. I was quiet. Nah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it did not. It did not go well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was great. So Quinn got in, and I won't repeat it, but he uh, he started just screaming, and it was awesome. They're cold, man. They're cold. There's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing you can do about that. It's <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, I love ice baths. Okay, uh, Quinn, this has been fun. It's been painful. 
it's been something. How would you describe how this has been for you? It's been fun. It's been fun. I think this was a uh, this is a good experience. This whole um, food and finance concept. Uh, you know, if we could come back and do this next time with pie or pizza instead of blazing wings, um, I feel like that might be a more uh, a, a different way to take this and see where that goes. But overall, I thought conceptually worked out pretty well. I hope this was entertaining for you guys. I hope you guys actually did learn something. I think there was some good concepts tossed out there. Mm-hmm. But I think there was high entertainment value in this. I think so, too. I, I hope that we provided some level of high entertainment value because the, the worst thing that would happen right now is – we went through all of this for no entertainment value. And yep. then, you know, it's still a fun experience, but, you know, we, yep. I, I do it for the views. So Do it for the views, man. Our suffering is their gain. That's it. Quinn Robertson, where can people find you if they want to connect to learn more? You've actually, okay, truth be told, last time we were joking about your LinkedIn posting, you've actually been posting consistently on LinkedIn. They're high-value posts, great engagement. Where can they find you? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it is Quinn. I think I actually got the tag Quinn Robertson. So it's LinkedIn dot, 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 whatever that is backslash. I think it's Quinn dash Robertson is what it is. Um, so yeah, I think that's, or you can just Google Quinn Robertson. It's a guy currently right now with glasses and mildly well done hair and like a, like a, like a black, uh, sweater vest looking thing. Nice. So, uh, that's the easiest place to find me. I'm on no other social Twitter. platforms really. I'm on Twitter, no, but it is. it's much more, I'm, I don't post a lot on Twitter. I'm finding more of my engagement on, on LinkedIn. I, I surf Twitter. Yep. I, I, uh, partake in, uh, LinkedIn. So, yeah. okay. And then, uh, your social security number. Uh, so it's yeah. One, 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 <laughs> one. I don't remember how these go. One, one, one. one. I, yeah. Something like that. All of those. <laughs> Yeah, it's three two four for the digits. Mm, mm-hmm. But uh, no, Quinn, thank you for coming on, man. It's been fun. I'm glad you're back in town. Hopefully, we'll see you at the marathon. We got to keep in touch. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Thanks for having me on, man. This was fun. God bless America.